Striker Scorpion 82 is now sponsored by Warhammer Combat Cards, a card battle game featuring your favourite Citadel miniatures from the 40k universe. Build your army decks, dominate opponents in player versus player action, collect and upgrade cards to fit your strategy, improve their power and unlock unique traits. Choose from all 40k factions, take part in campaigns based on iconic 40k battles, rise to the top of the leaderboard and win glory. Free to download and play, link is in the video description below or on the channel homepage and by using the unique link it helps support the channel. Thanks and enjoy the game. Right, welcome to this in-depth painting tutorial for the Plus channel. I think perhaps the biggest project I've ever undertaken. I wasn't going to go ahead and do this because it's so big. Uh, and that's to paint an orc stomper. But I think it'd be a great resource uh, for everyone here on the Plus channel. Uh, and so, and I think it'll really add some variety here to the in-depth painting tutorial series on the channel here. So I'm going to go for it here in this video. Uh, and attempt to paint the stomper up. It would be great to have this huge unit available for the orcs. You know, got a lot of Astra Militarum and Imperial sort of apocalypse sized units, but now if the orcs have one of these, then I can, uh, I'll can i have an element of an army that's ready for apocalypse. If I could start to link up with some other orc players, which I have lined up, then we could see some massive orc apocalypse battles. What a great thing that would be. So the first step is to get this Stomper painting up. And so I'm looking forward to painting him here. It's gonna take a while. Uh, but uh, maybe you're an orc player and you're tempted to get one of these and like myself you've been put off because it's such a big model well this video is here to help you out I'm going to show you every st stage of the way just follow along uh, each step and then I'll guide you through the process and at the end of it uh, you'll get uh, an orc stomper painted up uh, to the level that you see uh, in this video here there's no reason why you can't follow along step by step and achieve the exact same results so it is an in-depth painting tutorial, massive project. Gonna be showing you how to paint this thing up. Uh, all of the techniques, paint, like all these panels to paint here, the weathering techniques, the checkered pattern to paint, transfers, bit of graffiti I might add onto it as well. Uh, it's all of that covered. Uh, the weathering effects, the metallics and so on, uh, inks and washes, base colors, final highlights. There's a number of orcs on here as well, so we're covering how to paint those also. So, uh, so much to cover here in uh, this in-depth paint tutorial. So I've, I've bought the box here and I've cut out this as a reference. Mine's going to go for goths, it's that same colour scheme I'm going for, majority of black, red, some white, uh, and so that's how I'm going to uh, paint this up. But I'll still use this as a reference here just to see where, how different panels have been painted up. Let's check a pattern around the front, it looks quite cool. Definitely looks really good uh, here on this huge uh, chain sword thing here. Also, so I may copy that. And then I've got the front cover here as well as a reference with this big plate which I've actually stuck on mine showing me where I can put some other uh, checkered patterns and so on. Mine may look similar to this but with more red added in here for my own sort of take on uh, the Goff's colour scheme. So there we go, that's the artwork. The model's painted up and we'll cover the first stage here and this technique is all about trying to save you time saving your time so you can get on with this project. It doesn't have to be as intimidating. Uh, you can press on, and same with the orc color scheme. So for painting orcs, uh, over on YouTube, there's how to paint orc boys, a general painting scheme for orcs, and I've used that for all of the infantry units. Then here on the Plus channel, there is already an in-depth painting tutorial for orcs. I'll show you how to paint one of the orc trucks, and then ready to complete the whole series for orcs, then it'll be uh, the apocalypse size unit here, the orc stomper. So, I don't have a name yet, I've been chewing over different names. Uh, oh dear, it's a bit, <laughs> it's a bit big for the camera. I'll have to uh, readjust it. So there he is. I've had to zoom out a fair bit here, and you can see some Admech units in the background working on finishing that army off at the moment here. Uh, but there he is, constructed and put together. Now, all of this is stuck together. You can paint the arms and so on separately, but just the way the kit works. I just thought it was easier just to construct the whole thing. So I'm just going to paint the whole thing in one go. Uh, these all I've stuck on. I can't see any point in moving them around. Uh, the only thing that does move is the head. 
here which is magnetized so you can't see the magnets here or in here uh, there is a stack of magnets stuck on the inside of this vehicle pointing up and that's the magnetic draw heading up in this direction and when I was putting this together I dropped some magnets down the inside of this as well and so that's the point of contact and that magnet links that together and I can spin and rotate the head around uh, just there so that's the only bit I've magnetized I can turn his head and if this is ever destroyed uh, the head can fall off and I can put some smoke coming out of the top so a bit of variety there I was thinking about trying to magnetize and so on with these arms but I thought no I'm just going to stick it together and uh, paint it up and then just have the head uh, movable you can break yours down if you want but it's going to have more time uh, but um, it's entirely up to you so there he is finished, constructed, ready to go. Just going to paint him uh, and then he'll be ready to fight. I have stuck the front plate on here. So we paint. I just like the idea of that front plate. Uh, similar to the Gorkonaut that I have, I've put some defensive pieces of steel around the, the base here as well. Uh, and there is a couple of grots and so on. There's one here in this little tower, just there. There's the orc commander on top, and then round the back, there's a couple of little grots working away as well. There's one doing some repairs, another one here holding a big spanner. I haven't gone over the top, I haven't used all of them, but I'll just put a few of them on there uh, on this stomper. So there he is, he's got a sort of a hollow feel to him. <laughs> so the balance is quite nice and utterly huge. It's very exciting when you get a model like this kind of size and it'd be great to, to finally see it in games. So on through materials in just a moment. So uh, you can construct the vehicle, uh, the kit, however you want. You can break it down to pieces if you wish uh, or you can just paint it in one go. I, I reckon I'd be able to reach a lot of these pieces, no problem at all. Uh, just paint them up without these being loose. But if you want to paint bits separately, you can glue them on later, it's no problem. So I, I have given these a coat of spray. It's the plate mail spray. Uh, from Army Painter. So it's this one here. Heartily recommend it. It's great stuff. Uh, it's the way I've sprayed my Orc vehicles. If you see the in-depth painting tutorial for the Orcs, same stuff. So sprayed the whole vehicle over, sprayed the head separately, uh, but giving it a nice coat, making sure that you rotate the model around and you're spraying underneath. And again, I was able to catch all the angles here, no problem, uh, even with the model being glued together. So this is the part that's going to save you tons of time. The majority colour in this paint scheme here is silver and so if you're able to spray that on and then put your washes directly on top of that that's a load of silver you don't need to paint it's going to save you a massive amount of time really just picking up other panels and paint up in the other colors and that's that's where you're going to save loads of time but still get a, a great look uh, for the vehicle so you spray it with that and then the key if you just spray it with this and then put your washes on later uh, the paint the washes don't go on very well so the next trick is to use, uh, I've used purity seal, that's now been replaced by, I would use the Munitorum varnish. I've been using this and it's fantastic, it's a really good spray. Uh, it's a model varnish, but there's a bit of satin in it there, so it's great for your metallics. Uh, it doesn't kill off your metallics, and so I'd heartily recommend this stuff. It's about the best varnish I've ever used. This Games Workshop have come up with a, a brilliant spray. I've been using it on all of my new models, and it's great stuff. The idea is that you spray the model, make sure you, again, just as thoroughly as you spray the silver, spray it as thoroughly with this, because anywhere you miss, the washes won't go on uh, as well. So spray the whole model over, all the angles covered, uh, and give it a coat of the Munitorum varnish, and that will help all of the paints, especially the washes, just to go on nicely and evenly onto the model, no puddling and, and so on taking place with the help of that varnish. So that is a massive step there. Uh, to get the whole thing done in silver, it's a massive stride ahead. And then you're ready to immediately go on with your base colours. And the great thing about the silver is colours like white and red look great on this background of silver because it's quite a bright colour. Uh, it's an excellent foundation for painting your brighter colours onto the model as well. So I uh, can't overemphasize this enough. This is where it's going to save you tons of time and it's especially going to help with a project that's as big as this. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to run through all the materials that you need uh, for painting up uh, this stomper. Alright, so uh, we'll cover the paints that you need for this project. Uh, it's pretty much the same, but it is the same colours that we've used for the Orcs painted tutorial, and then also uh, for the in depth painted tutorial that's already on the Plus channel here. So 
Um, but I'll run through them here again in this video. It's not too many, not too bad, considering the size of the project here. So, uh, some metallics then, hush up copper. Then uh, iron breaker as well, that's your main metallic there for all the steel work and so on. Uh, then rune fang steel, that's the that's the, uh, the brighter steel. We'll use that to mix in later on for a highlight uh, with the hush up copper. Uh, and then uh, Abaddon Black, Ceramite White, Ushabti Bone, uh, Flash Gets Yellow. Uh, again, we'll, we'll use that around in, in different places. Again, it will help to highlight the Flash as well in the Orcs. Uh, this is an old Scorpion Green. It's called Moot Green now is the new colour. Uh, then Warp Stone Glow. Bestial Brown, which is now Mournfang Brown the new colour. Still Legion Drab, we'll use that for the weathering towards the end uh, around the, like, sort of the dust effects around the feet. Uh, Warboss Green, that's the flesh, base flesh colour for the Orc skin. Uh, Aphonian Camo Shade Wash. Uh, Troll Slayer Orange. And then your Evil Sun Scarlet, that's your main uh, red colour uh, for the Orcs. Here have a lot of the plates and so on on the model. And then Agrax Earth Shade uh, for the main wash that goes over the whole of the model, and also Seraphim Sepia. That's your rusty kind of colour. If you're painting like Admech, for example, uh, I would use, I wouldn't use Seraphim Sepia because I wouldn't want the steel looking too rusty. I'd instead use the Nuln Oil, that's your black wash, and then your Agrax Surf Shade for a bit of brown, so to make it weathered a little bit. But for Orcs, it's sort of going to be sort of really rusty and not looked after and polished uh, very well. So I go for Seraphim Sepia for the rusty effect and then Agrax Earth Shade for the deeper shading, but still that, that stronger brown uh, colour to it. So uh, that gives you that nice rusty effect, which you'll see later on as we uh, paint up the silver panels. So that's the colours that you need. Uh, and then just the usual here, just a good selection of brushes. Would recommend you get a brush like this here, a large dry brush or a Citadel shade brush number one, this one's called because uh, you've got some large areas to cover, a brush like that is going to really help out. If you've got small brushes like this, your regular sort of sister large brush and so on, you're going to really struggle. I, you must get a larger brush like this uh, if you're going to save yourself some time. But a good large dry brush here from Games Workshop or the shade brush, that's about the size that you're going to need. Uh, but these brushes here are going to be a massive help again, going to save you loads of time. The size of a brush can make a huge difference the amount of time you spend uh, painting the model. So I encourage you to uh, get one of these larger ones if you can. Now this project is going to take time, so the, the plan that I have to approach this, because I, I wasn't going to do this because it's such a big project, it's very hard to film uh, something so big over days and days, so the idea is uh, I'm going to show you uh, the base colours and I'm going to show you on uh, part of the model. I think I'm going to primarily focus on the head here. We'll go for because a, a lot of the colours are here. All the colours are represented and we've got some nice flesh uh, and orc model to paint up here. So I'm going to do uh, the colours, give you a spectrum of all the base colours and what I'm going to do overnight, and later on today, I'm just going to go over the whole of the model uh, with those base colours and then you can see it uh, and then I can move on to the next stage. just the way that I can be able to get this done in a sensible amount of time. So that's the approach, but we'll see, I'll see how it goes. <laughs> Again, I'm intimidated by this, I haven't painted one before, um, so <laughs> we'll just have to see how it goes along here. So, because I don't want the, the video to, to go on for too long, uh, but at the same time, there is a lot to show you here uh, for painting this model up. So I'm excited here, we're on the verge of getting an orc stomper painted up, and it opens up so many possibilities here. I'm thinking of Apocalypse especially, some specialist games that we can play now, uh, here on the plus channel with the orcs also. So uh, I think we'll start with the uh, the hash up copper here. So this will paint on really nicely onto the silver that you've already prepared. This colour will go on nice and easily. So uh, we'll look to paint that on. Really painting on areas where there's exhaust grills and to add in an alternative to the silver uh, that predominantly is going to be on this model. So I've zoomed in here on this. I've got a Sistel uh, base brush here. So I want to be generally tidy. I don't want it to go on the silver areas uh, and start making mistakes at this stage. I want to be generally tidy. There's some good examples here of where you can paint. So it's just common sense really. Where do you think the, you'd use the different 
uh, coppery shades. So I would say the ammunition here for sure. So you can see this ammunition coming down here from this Super Gatler. So I'm gonna see how nice that goes on. Brilliant to have that silver base colour and it just saves you tons of time. So I'm gonna paint that on nice and neat there. And then a bit on the other side. The tips will be in silver and then the main cartridge of the gun or the bullet will be uh, in this coppery colour. And then that band you can see that will be in black. That's the belt that holds it together. I'm just gonna repeat this here. Just dragging the brush over the detail and again there. The key is not to go too over the top here, but just to make it noticeable, I think this barrel can be in this copper colour. So that is actually a strap. That's actually like a leather strap that runs around there. We'll pick that out later on. But the rest of this barrel I'm just going to fill in. Just an, an alternate metallic here. Just so it doesn't look like the whole thing's just been sprayed silver, you know, some effort's been made to introduce a different metallic colour. And you don't have to do loads. Just pick it out here and there and that'll be enough to add the variety that you're looking for with this. So okay, that easily goes on one coat, will be fine. Front of the barrel. Like so. I even putting on these first colours here because this is sat half built for, for months and it's it's exciting just putting these first colours on. Sorry, can't help it, but <laughs> it's good to get this thing on the move here. And I suppose what helps is you know it's a one-off. Don't plan to well you never know. Could do two or three of these. <laughs> okay, so looking around, uh there is an exhaust type thing just here. I think I'll go for copper on that. Not too much. Do you want to go overboard? But this is no need to go overboard, but here and there, and it's just going to be that end exhaust. Just there. I'll go around the other side of it in just a moment, just to make sure it's painted on the other side. Then looking about, not really anything else around here. Now, nothing up there. So just simply go around the model. Some of these panels you can do in copper if you wish. And uh, like this one, maybe don't really need to and so I'm just going to go around the model and choose some more areas to paint this cover but it doesn't need to be over the top here just here and there wherever you think and usual things like grills exhausts chimneys funnels uh, b barrels uh, vents this kind of stuff and it's the theme I've repeated throughout this orc color scheme uh, but you'll find maybe you're aiming for about <laughs> less than five percent of the model really being painted with this but it will be noticeable you see on here how that just sticks out now it's not just boring silver you've got another metallic and it just makes such a difference all right so copper down i've gone across the whole model here uh orcs you, you, massive license to paint where you know paint whatever you want uh, as much or as little wherever you think it should go uh so uh, i've just got the copy out i've added it onto this bit here is this grill this cooling grill type thing here uh, a, a couple of panels, don't really want to do many of the panels in that colour, but a few here and there. The end of this uh, sculpture here I've done, there's a little panel just tucked inside there. Uh, this drum for the ammo. I have done all of the exhausts, I've done sort of that kind of combination. So uh, there, here, and then one whole length, just to show that I've a large area painted like that. The copper, uh, these tanks here, the end exhausts of this bomb. Uh, here, these shells for the, the big gun, and then a few panels and, and bits around uh, here, here, and then some of the um, piping and so on uh, at the back here. This little bit, also just this exhaust type thing here as well, the back end of this rocket as well, and that's about it. And then on the head, not much at all, just the little cog uh, that the orc. Uh, has there on top of his back uh, just done in that copper colour scheme but nowhere else or there so I've got all that colour done uh, if you make a mistake just paint over it again with silver later on down the line if you want to add some in just crack out the hush copper and add some more as you go along I'm going to be changing this slightly uh, correcting areas I don't want in certain colours and adding extra colour in you just do it as you go along as the whole thing starts to take shape 
uh, you might fancy changing the colours round or adding in extra uh, as you go along. So uh, next colour then will be the Warboss Green. I would say do this one first because then you can neaten up with the uh, with the brown colour coming a bit later. So again we'll go to this head and I use this for any of the orc flesh. So I want to be generally neat but I want to make sure that they go right up to the edge. You see he's got like a vest on here. I want to paint well into that there. I don't want to leave a gap of silver between the vest and the flesh. So I'm putting the vest right up to the the vest here overlapping it almost and then I'll tidy up with the brown later on but anywhere with this flesh again the silver's brilliant should be able to do this in one coat no problem so one sort of generous coat and working underneath the arm and around it looks like he has fingerless gloves on so I'm going to go up to the start of the glove and you start to get something like that looks like one coat will do fine Uh, nice and neat around there and then I'm gonna have to paint all these fingers and again I'm, I'm going deliberately going a bit over the glove and then later on I'll tidy that up with the brown the uh, steel legion drab so that's that bit then we've got the face to do I'll go over the teeth we'll pick those out again a bit later with the shabti bone his ear Working it into his eye sockets and nose, all around the mouth. Being careful, there's some silver areas here, so I don't want to get the green onto that. So I'm, yeah, I want him to be neat here. And his neck, I can see going into his chest there. So I'm going to stab the brush into there and stab the brush in between his head and chest because I can see the neck going off into the chest there and in, like so. The other arm. I would I would recommend putting some orcs and grots and so on uh, on this vehicle. The introduction of actual orcs on this helps to add to the scale, adds to the interest of it. It's not just a cold, uh, crewless vehicle, but yeah, you've got an opportunity to stick lots of crew doing silly things uh, right on the vehicle itself. Classic orcs, I really would recommend. I haven't gone over the top, but I don't want crew all over the place, but you, it's entirely up to you. But I want a few crew visible on the outside and this orc stomper commander here will look great sat right on top and we'll paint him up nicely and it'll be a nice focal point to see and it'll help give a sense of the scale of this thing uh, one thing by the way in preparation do drill out the holes uh, of the uh, his slugger here and also uh, the other guns that are on uh, the stomper itself big shooters I've drilled those out also, there's something else to do. You can do it at this stage, no problem, just drill them out uh, and you can just fill them in later on. That won't affect, it won't affect anything, the fact they've not been sprayed. Uh, just looking around, that's the arms done on both sides and all the fingers are in, yep. Yeah. And just the trigger finger picked out. All right, so uh, I'm gonna paint up these the other little gits that are all over this uh, stomper as well, just in that flesh and that'll be that color done. So uh, that's that colour done, you can see just paint some of these grots, just all the flesh, just common sense, just follow, follow the flesh all the way around. You want it to overlap a little bit on onto all the cloths and hats and things like that, but avoiding the metallic, you don't want to cover them. Um, so there he is, just tucked in there, and then there's one other one on top of this crow's nest just here. Again, just using logic, common sense for all the flesh should go. Next colour then will be the Ashabiti Bone. And looking to fill in uh, the mouth and teeth of any of these orc boys or grots. So this one here, for example. Just taking a dab of paint. It's a bit too much. And then looking just to fill in his teeth. That whole mouth cavity, the whole thing. Not the lips though, but just where the teeth are. And then we'll let the shading take care of that later on and tidy that up, pick out the, the teeth and the gum line and so on. So that's him. Uh, the others, if they have their mouths open, this orc uh, commander on top. His mouth's closed, but he has teeth sticking up. So, I'm just gonna work that brush in there. Wanna be pretty tidy. 
picking those teeth out like that. The other area to paint is any of the lights or search lights. So there's a big example of one just here. Uh, I'm wanting to fill that in with the Ashab T-Bone. This one's so big I can avoid the silver grill that's over the top. I just want to fill in the Ashab T-Bone. Been generally neat. Again, we'll tidy it later when we come to the final highlight stage. Uh, but I want to fill that in with the Ashab T-Bone. Like so. There's some other smaller ones around on the vehicle as well. I might just give that a, a second coat just to strengthen that a little bit. Very easy, very straightforward. So anyway, you see these kind of searchlight type things. There's a few others, then uh, fill those in also. Right, so that's that colour done. You can see the teeth picked out on him. Uh, then teeth picked out here on him. And then upstairs on the crow's nest. Teeth picked out on him. And then this thing at the front. That's pretty much it. Um, so really it's just the, the mouth or the teeth of any... Uh, orcs or grots and then uh, this thing just here and that's pretty much all there is uh, you know there's something else that can be picked out you can pick out the bones it depends how you want to paint this this has been uh, sculpted like two big horns uh, so we can go for bone uh, color scheme on the two horns here on top of the head uh, because this one's quite large I'm going to go for two colours, so we're going to blend here, take your Steel Legion Drab, which is the colour we're going to use next, uh, and then what we're going to do is we're going to go for a Shab T-Bone. The principle is you go lighter at the top or at the tip, so I'm going to run a Shab T-Bone about two thirds of the way down, all the way around. Like so. About three quarters, because you're going to blend it like that. I haven't done this before, but I imagine this will work okay. Still Legion Drab, then around the base. So you can see what I'm getting at here. I'm starting to introduce a darker shade at this early point. And then look, just blending it in. This will blend easily. Working my way back up to about halfway with sort of the blended version. Moving quite quickly because you don't want the paint to dry. Then more Steel Legion Drab around the base. And again drag it up. Looking something like this. Yeah, that looks great. May as well paint these nicely. Because they will be a focal point. that people, People's eyes will be drawn to these. So I get them looking good. See that looks nice. Okay, happy enough with that. So I'll just um, repeat on the other side. Now you can go uh, the way this one's been sculpted. It's still it's like the bone snapped off. It's been cleaned up and then screwed back on again, and it's still bone running up. So only the the rivets and a small steel band running around. Uh, it's still bone. So I'm going to stick to that. So I'm going to run this up. I'm going to go. I'm going to go neat at this stage, so you can just about see it sculpted on the steel ring that runs around. So I'm going to go up so that neatly. And that'll make picking it out, and highlighting it later a lot easier. It may as well be neat, and then neat on the other side around that. Great. And then I'm just going to run that off like so. A bit more of the Ashab T-Bone, like so, and then the same again, Steel Legion Drab starting at the bottom, and then fading it in. Two colours seem to, to blend with each other really well, and it's immediately given a nice base there, and then that can be, uh, washes over the top and so on later on, and that should look really good. A bit more Steel Legion Drab, just to strengthen this, going all the way around, and then just fading it in. Okay, that's looking good. 
Yeah, so we've got that kind of finished now. When that shades up, that should look great. Okay, that's optional. You don't have to paint it that way. You can paint his horns whichever way you want, but I'll go for more of the natural look. So the orcs have slain some huge beast somewhere. Uh, it's perfectly feasible, and then they've stuck the horns onto this as a trophy, I think. <laughs> I think that'll look great. All right, and it's similar to how it's painted in the artwork here as well on the cover of the... Uh, yeah, on the cover of the um, Stomper box. All right, so that's those colours done. So what we'll do now is go into Steel Legion Drab, uh, and what we're looking to paint is the cloths and, and clothing here on any of the orcs or gits. But so we're actually making good progress. So you can start to see these colours starting to form on this here. So size his stuff. So he's got, you can see in here he's got like a tunic on, he's got belts, and then there's some metal work as well. So the primary aim is to get the tunic painted, or his vest, whatever he's wearing. I'll cover the belts for now and we'll pick those out later on with the Mornfang brown. But for now I wanted to fill in all the gaps. I'm not going to be worried too much about being hyper neat here. I don't want to go on areas that I don't want to be this colour, but uh, it doesn't matter if it goes onto the straps. Any straps and belts is no problem, because you'll pick those out in just a moment. But I'm looking to fill in all the cloth areas of this. I don't want to go on any silver work. Rivets and studs and so on can go over them because they can be picked out later on when it comes to the highlight stage. But the worst thing I want is is gaps and, and silver being seen. I don't want that to be seen. And now I'm being neat around the orc flesh here, just where the vest meets his arm, the flesh of his arm. I'm being tidy around there now. And because we've overlapped with the green, there's no silver gap to be seen there. It's all filled in with either green or the Steel Legion trap. And I'm just working into the turret base I can see his legs partly going down inside this turret here that's filling out nicely so now you're starting to lose areas of silver and the whole model is starting to the whole paint scheme is really starting, starting to take shape there's a metal object around disc in the center of his chest I'm not going to cover that or leave that metal and that'll shade up nicely later on like so uh, his cap that he's wearing I think I'll paint that black later on, so we'll leave that. And I'm just going to go around his neck area. Yep, with the vest, let's get that filled in. Uh, his gloves. Um, you go black or brown. No, I'll go brown for this guy. A lot, there's a lot of brown in mine. Overall colour scheme, so that look all right. Spin neat around the fingers. Yeah, no, brown's fine. Black or brown, really doesn't matter. You really have got. To, it's up to you. Being careful to go around the fingers here, the cloth. But on his, on the the back of his hand, there's a a uh, metal panel. So I'm gonna leave that silver. Then now where the glove meets the wrist, just being tidy around there. Great. And just checking over the model, looks good, so we'll go on to the next glove on the other side. Okay, I'm being tidy here. Want to be tidy at this point. Glove, and then where it meets the wrist. I don't want to see any silver where it shouldn't be, it's all filled in properly. Just on his fingers now, his fingerless gloves that he's wearing. And again, there's a steel panel on the back of that glove as well. Brilliant. Okay, and then looking around, there shouldn't be anywhere else on the actual main body of the vehicle, so it's the Orc Boys and Gits who are looking to, to pick out any colours then. But look, look at that, it's looking really good now. Getting all these basic bits sorted out, and some real colours being introduced to this stomp already, so making really good progress. Okay. So that's that colour done. Just again, logic, common sense. Just follow the sculpt the Games Workshop provides. So like his hat here, uh, his webbing around his feet, bandages around his feet, his belt and thing that hangs down. Uh, his dignity there. Uh, that You can cover that as well. Um, and then like his shoes, this one's wearing. Just all logic, just follow it around. And, and paint that in for each of these and see the way that it separates these now from the model you've got some areas of interest going on and so this simple color scheme of the silver 
Uh, it's pushed more into the background, so it's not as noticeable because of all these little areas of interest you've got going on. So it's worth putting the effort. If you took these little guys away, uh, there is a lot of plain sort of metal work, but now you've got these little little areas, little dioramas going on here, and it's well worth adding them in. And it just makes the whole thing just look great. So that's that colour done. You can see it finished on, on him as well, and that's looking really, really good. So that's that colour done. I'll move on to the next colour here for these base colours. Okay, so the next colours here uh, is for any piping work. So that's any piping that curves around. You don't want things like this. It's like a piston here. That's going to stay metal. Uh, there is like a an armoured cable running through here and it's a bit chipped off where you can see it's metal underneath. We'll paint that. Uh, and then you can see bits like this. You can see them here. Just cables. So that's going to be like hydraulic type stuff. Fluids, fuels. Um, electric cables and so on. Uh, so, I usually go for warpstone glow. That's this colour here. But I'm not doing too much of it, it gets too much. So, for some of them, I'm going to paint uh, the Abaddon black. You can choose whichever colours you want. Orange looks okay. Uh, red you can go for as well. Uh, but I'm going to stick to the green just as another colour being introduced. And then black, because I don't want to do too much in the green. I don't want it to start interrupting the main colours, which is going to be your black, white, and red. So, for example, this armoured cable here, metal underneath. If it's armoured cable, I think that's going to be black. So I'm going to pick that out in black. It's going to go neat up to the bit where it's exposed metal work. And just go nice and tidy. With this black kit. Brilliant. And then just work it round like so and it's another area where you're starting to deny some uh, metallics and you put another colour in now black will do later on for the panelling but for now I just want to get this bit done so I think the rule I'm going to try and follow is wherever it seems to be an armoured cable or something to do with hydraulic work like here you see this, this piston run along that end cable I think would hold like hydraulic fluid for example, so I'm going to do that in black. Then if it's something that's electric powered, then I'll go for the green. Now there's no rules at all with orcs, you paint however you please, but I think that I'll generally try and stick to that. There's another cable there running down to this piston, so I'll pick that out as well. I'll go around the other side in a moment, just showing you here the general idea of how this is going to go. But again, it's another area where it's not just all going to be metallic. You've actually picked out in black here. This will, sh again, shade up nicely. And again, one coat goes on nicely onto the model. Like so. So there's some, some black cabling done. It's quite boring, but it takes away from some of the silver. Add, and then... So the whole model just doesn't look shaded silver. You don't want that effect. Even though, like, 70% of this model is going to be the silver colour. Then for the Warpstone Glow... Uh, I actually like the idea of this one being green, this large one, so I'm going to put that in green. Nice to introduce another colour here. And I think this one's electrical as well, so I'm going to go for green along this one. It's quite a bold colour, it's going to stand out a fair bit. And again, I'll paint the other sides uh, when I paint off camera here. This is a big cable here at the back. Um, now I'll do some of these smaller cables in the green here and here and then I'll put this one in black so there's a cable just here I'll put that one in green just at the top here that one will go green no problem yeah that'll do because that goes all the way around the back of the model and swings all the way around to here you don't really see them when the model sprayed silver when you start looking and filling them in this model's full of these cables. So this will take you a while, but um, this will be a fair amount to cover. But you can see it around the back there. So again, I'm just going to stick to that principle, uh, paint all the way around the model. So you're going to have cables like here on this git with the radio, the, the power line he's got there, uh, connecting his headset to his microphone. I need to paint that in probably in black. There's that to do. So there's large, super big here uh, on Stu and small, but uh, all the same principle. This. Uh, green, warpstone glow, and the abandoned black. Okay, so uh, cabling done. You can see it working around the back here. A mixture of uh, 
the black cabling and then also the green as well. So I think that balances out quite well. Not too much screen cabling going on, but still a fair amount of it, maybe two thirds of it. Uh, it's a little bit here and there, just common sense. And again, you can see a fair bit of it there uh, on the gun mechanism. So there's not really much color going, not much white and red going on inside here. Um, so the introduction of these colors really helps to break up that metallic work. Uh, and then the little git on the crow's nest here, his wiring for his headset I've done in black as well. Uh, you can also do, just thinking here, let's see if there's an example. Uh, yeah, so where any of these orc boys or gits here are wearing like shades or glasses of any kind, uh, you can take the black here, I'll just show you on camera. So uh, the glass part of the eyes, so the of the sunshades or the goggles can be filled in black. I just paint them black and leave the metallic rims to be shaded, but that picks that one out. Uh, then just checking the other one at the back's facing away. Yeah, and the other one has shades. This little get just here. So I'll leave the whole structure of the shades in the silver, but then just the actual last bit around the eyes of filling with black just to differentiate it from the silver there okay so that's him done great so he's virtually ready this one here and the others yeah they're virtually ready for uh, for shading now okay so uh, say something else I've missed that's his cap so give him a, a black baseball cap I'll just fill it in. I want to be neat, nice and tidy here. One coat of black and wash is going on top, and that'll be finished. So we'll just get that filled in. Now I'm going for quite sort of uh, flat colours in a way, black and browns for the cloaks and the clothing and so on, because I don't really want to draw too much attention to that. The main focus on these orc models here, these gits and boys and so on will be their flesh that's going to be the main area where I'm going to put the effort on or put the off put the effort into and so I want the eye to be drawn to that really everything else to be secondary so going for sort of sensible colors here to, uh, for the clothing footwear and hats and so on so that's that done the next color I have here is the bestial brown or the Mornfang brown and that's where if I show you on the helmet here any straps he has so he's got a, a belt and some back straps going on I'm going to uh, paint those in this brown so yeah you can see him just there just adds another variety another shade just to show you made a bit of effort and it's easily done just going to paint that strap to there and the strap goes around his side I'm using a finer brush this time and around his back so you can see it, yeah you can see it just there and I'll go around here so you're using an effective technique and a quicker technique but you, it doesn't look like you're being lazy with your colours, you are picking out details where you should be uh, even though the process is very easy because people will pick it up if you've skipped whole areas it looks rushed and sort of cheap looking and so just with a little bit more effort, it's not much effort just to paint these straps but it just adds a nice other dimension to this brown and it makes it look like you've made the effort and uh, people will notice so just making sure Pick those straps out nice and neat. She's got two lots of two tones of brown going on there. That looks fine. A little mistake. I do want this tidy, so I'll just reopen the Steel Legion drab and correct a mistake just here. Where that brown's gone into the tunic. Easily done. I think it's worth a little bit of effort there because if you're going to go for a quicker technique, technique like this, you want to. Make the effort where you know where people are going to be looking. So I know people are going to be looking at this guy on top. So I want to paint him really nice. 
and the, the face area here, the central part uh, of the stomper itself, you know, the whole central part here. I'll make the effort with that, and then everything else sort of fades into the background. You don't have to put as much effort onto it because the eye is not drawn to that. That's the whole principle here. But uh, I'll go around, I'll check the other little gits at the back to see if they need some straps put on. Uh, just logic, if there's straps and belts and so on, you can pick that out. You don't have to, but um, I'm just going to go over the rest of the model. Okay, so let's put the head back on. That's the kind of current situation we've got. There's a long way to go, but we've picked out a lot of the colours here, uh, sort of the fiddly bits, and these gits and so on are picked out nicely. So, the next stage is these three primary colours here. So, uh, ceramite white, the abaddon black, we've used some already, but for doing the panelling and so on, uh, and then the Evil Sun of Scarlet. I'm going to introduce this red into this colour scheme as well. So it's these three colours here. Goths is sort of this colour scheme. I like to add a bit of red in. It's an aggressive colour. And it's a nice contrasting colour to the green of the orc flesh. And you can see that throughout the orc army that I have. I think it brightens them up, brings them to life quite nicely. So it's these three colours. Uh, so you paint, you paint this however you want. Uh, but the idea is that the machiney sort of areas around here, so this is all the pistons and so on, uh, the gum barrels and intricate bits inside inside here. Not really going to paint those any colours. That's all metal work. You think how logically, and the orcs aren't particularly logical, but um, try and think logically where they would slap the paint onto this big thing. You know, it's going to be on the crests, this jaw here, the face, this part here. Um, so those kind of areas. Sometimes you, it's logical, common sense, where Games Workshop have actually sculpted on areas where you can paint on um, so I want the eye to be drawn the focal point to be the center of the model and the head here so this kind of area similar to how I paint my towel uh, they have a basic gray color scheme and then I put the primary color sort of the, the head central part of the body um, and like crest work as well this crest up here is going to be a, a focal point also so that's where you're going to see the majority of this colour scheme and then sort of patches here and there and then other areas like the side here and the back will be the old panel but not much so the emphasis is going to be where it should be which is sort of this focal point just here it means you don't have to paint the whole model in all these panels um, but you can just paint and prioritise uh, particular areas um, so I'm going to stick to that principle and another principle is uh, where Games Workshop have sculpted panels like this this mesh here, um, this panel here, all this special effect they've put on, uh, this sort of hammered beaten look to this panel, uh, this panel around here, this lump of metal on the neck. I'll leave that silver because it's going to come up nice when you shade. So those areas that you don't have to paint. But sort of the more clear, plain panels is where we're going to paint with our colours uh, and then leave the areas where the effort's been made with the sculpting, leave them to be shaded because they'll look great and so I'm not going to try and paint those. And that'll start to cut down your options uh, and it'll sort of make sense where you're going to paint. But it's just your own choice, plenty of artistic license here. Definitely want to go for some kind of colour along this part here. Add definitely some colour around this, around this face plate as well, that's the priority. Then what I do is I start with the colours where you know uh, you're definitely going to paint this panel red or black and then just sort of build up as you go along. So for example, this central part here, I've got a pretty good idea of how I'm going to paint that. So just start putting the paint down where you know you want it to go and the rest will fall into place. So for example here, uh, I've got all three pots open, so I just want to maybe build this up as I go along. I definitely want this panel here red. So now I'm going to go for that. Now being careful because uh, it's all etched here, this bit I'm going to do white, this one, but the edges I want to keep metal, like they painted just the front of the panel and the rest of it stayed metal, um, so I'm just sort of working along, but don't want to fill in that there, that's the great idea of spraying everything silver, because all the sides of your panels are already silver, you just need to paint the surface of each of these panels here, this uh, rivet I can leave in silver. Like so, you don't have to be drastically neat, like you could leave an edge not completely finished because you're going to be doing chipping effects and so on later on anyway. Just run the red down here. 
like so. It's great to get red onto this model here. I'm actually not being overly neat. The paint's not even going to the edge of the panel here all the time. You can see it's a little bit sort of not totally neat then. There's little bits of silver still on there. That's fine because you're going to be chipping it up later on. It's going to save you a bit of time as well. So then just to give you an idea, I'll go for uh, the... I definitely want this white. This bit. This white can go over the rivets, no problem. And again, it's just the surface of the panel. Not going to be worried about the sides, they can stay silver. Great, so that's a good start. Now just to <laughs> continue the process on. Uh, so all this little, all this work in here can stay silver. Can't see any point in trying to fit panels in there. Around the uh, sculpture there, that top panel, just there. I might paint that black. Not the edges of it, or the, the inside panel, but just the top part of it. So you can imagine where the orcs would just slap some paint on top. Imagine they wouldn't be the neatest of painters. There, so uh, just putting that in black, like so. I think most of the colour is going to be black. You're looking for maybe half of your panel work to be black, one quarter white and one quarter red, something like that. But it's no hard and fast draw. So when it comes to painting this, I'm going to think very carefully about how I'm going to paint this one here. I don't want to paint the whole thing white, it's too strong. So I'm going to leave some panels out. This panel here, texture panel, I'll leave that one and let the inks do their work and on that rusty effect there. Uh, you see this panel here is sort of beaten still. We'll leave that as well, I'm not going to do that one. Uh, anything with texture, this one, big one across here, leave that as it is, let the shading uh, do its work there as well. So that's going to uh, narrow your options down. But you can see mostly white on this one. And then it will tone down when you start doing your rust effects and so on on this. Uh, but I'm going to start the process here. Take your time. Uh, you know, choose carefully where you want these colours to go, and just sort of work your way through. See this shoulder pad here? It's all this beaten steel. I'm not going to fill that in. Uh, that'll look nice, just shaded with the washes. So just give me an idea. Um, if you come to an area where you're going to go for a checkered pattern, uh, it's up to you. You can paint it white if you want to. That's the base colour. Um, it's probably a good idea so you know where your panelings, your, your checkered pattern is going to go. This face plate here, I'm definitely going to do that white. It's a central focal point of the head, so that's going to be white for sure. Uh, and then this, I might base coat that white, uh, looking to do some checkered pattern on it later on. But uh, I'll press on here uh, and get these three colours. This is the key point where this, this model is really going to come to life. All right, so I've done all three colors here. It's taken absolutely ages, so take your time. Lots of panels to paint. This is gonna be a long process, this one here. I had to sort of choose where to put the colors as well. I've taken the arm off here just for ease of painting. Also, just a small connection just there. Um, but it doesn't matter if you still have yours attached. Uh, it's not gonna to cause too much trouble. So, um, you can see the, the rockets then a variety of colors. I haven't done all the white, because the white is something you can paint on, paint on later. Um, but that's the colours there on these rockets. I like those quite bright. Uh, we're using the red and white a fair bit on them just to draw attention to these huge uh, missiles and rockets that the uh, Stomper has. And then, as I mentioned, uh, I'm focused. I want the eye to focus in on uh, the head here, and then also this chest part and shoulders. So you'll see a lot of the red and white, especially, uh, that is sort of focused on that point there. Some of these white areas are going to become checkered later on. Uh, there may be other areas where I decide to paint checkered. and uh, I can change panels around. I can change this one to black later on. Uh, change uh, this black onto red or whatever. You can, add. as you go along, you sort of get an idea of, of how you want it to look. So there's the head. I don't feel you have to copy exactly all the panels that I've done. You know, you've got complete license to paint however you wish. I've gone for a black front here because uh, I thought white here and white here would be too much, but a white front plate there that's going to attract quite a lot of attention, which you want it to, it's the front of the face. Uh, remember, like when you paint all boys and so on, you can paint some of the panels on the pistols and guns, on black on one side, red on the other. Uh, black around this crown bit here, 
a bit of black and red around there. But the main focal point I want to be this face, which I've done in white, so that'll stand out nicely, and that's where you want the attention to be. Add, and then I've gone for the white here, a bit of red added in. Add white, red, and black looks pretty good. A little bit of paint around the crow's nest. Going to leave these pipes just the standard metal uh, here, and you see a high concentration of red uh, and black and white sort of in, in this area, and they're this primarily uh, white. I, I'm not entirely happy with you. I, I imagine I'm going to change a few of these panels around, but I'll do that as I go along. We'll get the washes on, and I'll give you an idea of, of how the model is going to look. Two washes. Um, Two big washes to do, a bit of shading to do on the orc flesh on these uh, orc and uh, Gretchen or Git models as well. So I'll show you the back also. So you notice there's a lot less red around here. There's more black panels and hardly any white. This is sort of uh, not as much attention needed around here. So that's uh, just less, sort of more plain looking around here. And so, you know, that's where the focal point is, which I think uh, works out quite well. But um, yeah, I'm still not quite happy with it here, so there'll be some changes, but I think I'm, I'm not gonna just sit here and wait. I'm gonna get going with this. And then the great thing about this technique is you can change the colors, the colors of your panels, no problem. And even at a late stage, you just repaint them the color, wash them again uh, with the washes, and then you can pick out the colors, no problem. So it's not too late if you wanna change and make, uh, make changes later on. That shouldn't cause any trouble. So that's the base colors, generally neat. So try not to go over the the sides of the, the edges here of these panels. We're trying to keep uh, there some areas I haven't, it's not perfect, but it's going to be chipped up uh, with the silver anyway. So you're not looking for a, a perfect finish. Uh, so you're just looking for a generally neat here. The worst thing is when you start flicking black, say, onto some silver panels. That, that's clear mistakes that people are going to see. So you want to try and avoid that. And if you do, then try and make those repairs if you can. So the work that I've done on the gun, some of these air has been picked out with the black also the ammo box here picked out in black just some nice solid black areas look good and trying to do um trying it's like don't be afraid of doing look black panels next to each other one two three four all next to each other i don't want like this even sort of black there black there and it's all sort of like a chessboard. Don't I want to avoid that? I want it sort of in haphazard and random sort of clusters instead of this even spread because I think that'll look terrible. So uh, just take your time, be patient with the way that you place these. And you may want to go for, for more colour being added to this or less. Or you might want to change the concentration of it around. I've gone for red down here in between these, just not all of them, but uh, well, virtually all of them. I just think it looks nice and aggressive sort of colour when you had the red down there. Uh, just sort of warning the enemy to keep away from the... Warning anybody actually to keep away from the feet. So there he stands now. And that's all of, all of the base colours done. So we'll see how it looks at this as the stages go by. I'm not entirely happy with them at the moment, as I said. But uh, I think he'll start to improve once we get these base colours on. But there he is with the gun. Uh, he's looking the part. I do like this front plate just here. It does look pretty good. And it should look nice when it's all shaded and, and rusted up with some weathering techniques, which we'll cover later as well. Some of these areas, that's going to be a big checkered pattern across there. And across here as well. And around the back. And there's some other areas you can pick and choose. Don't want to go too heavy with the checkered pattern, just on some selected areas. But uh, there we go. So the next stage is the uh, Aphonian Camo shade here. It's like a greeny brown shade. It's perfect for shading uh, the orc flesh. And you'll see that in the orc painting tutorial over on YouTube. That's the color that I use for that. So wherever there's orc flesh will be shaded with this. Just a, a few areas. Next. So I'll take the head here. So I just shade the whole thing. Or shade the his face here. Going in between the teeth, that doesn't matter. I want to work that in around his neck. And then also underneath where the neck, you can see the green of the neck going in underneath there as well. And a good coverage of this. Nice and generous, I don't want it puddling though. Right up to where the arm meets the 
vest here and then around the wrist make sure it shades all those muscles on his arm brilliant and then around the other arm fingers around the rest of the arm this is very straightforward really working it up underneath the shoulder pad make sure I work the brush up underneath there that shades up pretty good so just I'll paint the other uh, grots here get those painted up same process just the flesh you're after to cover doesn't matter if it flows in between the teeth uh, of the model that's no problem at all okay so that's that color done uh, he took a, about a minute so that's him and then the uh, the other gits as well all shaded with that ready to go next color our next wash is the Seraphim Sepia. This will be a rusty effect now to add to this metallic work. And it should go on nicely. If you put an even coat of the uh, Munitor and Varnish over this model, then it should flow on uh, well here uh, with the Seraphim Sepia. Just to shade this all in, to turn this from sort of very plain looking colours and start to add these weathering effects here to make it sort of this rusty heap uh, of junk that this Orc Stomper is. <laughs> Miracle the Orcs are able to keep it running. Um, so rust effect we're really going to paint across the entire model so this is going to shade across all the black uh, with the white you can uh, shade all the all the rivets and so on i need to cover the entire thing uh, so just all the rivets areas that naturally would be shaded uh, but all the metal work uh, the horns here can be shaded with that as well yeah i reckon yeah i can shade them with that uh, the orc on top, all of his uh, vest and clothing, the pistol, uh, the gloves, uh, as all the red can be shaded that way as well. So you're looking just to shade everything here on this model, and it's really going to help just to link everything together and to start adding these weathering techniques. So I'll show you the head here, the difference it makes, and then just to apply it to the rest of the stomper. So I'm taking my large dry brush here because the bristles are quite long. I want to be able to reach into the nooks and crannies of this model um, so it's a larger brush I'm going for seraphim sepia and I'm just working it immediately it's having a nice adding a nice weathered kind of look to this model straight away it really starts to make a difference if you get this bit painted up with these shades then you're sort of tabletop standard ready to fight I'm going to try and push this through the eyes here to get a bit of shading through that. Looks so. Now I'm looking to be generous with this, but don't want to flood needlessly with it. Want a good coverage here. This will to flow into all the cracks, working it through. I'm interested to see how it shades different types of the different uh, textures of metal here. Got to go inside this jaw piece, get that all shaded up. Yeah, because areas that you miss will stick out. You'll have that that clean colour of the silver. So you really want to take your time, work your way in. But that's looking. Looking good, and there's still be another stronger shade to go on top of this as well, once this is dry. So, working it in. And you see the speed of having one of these larger brushes, so I heartily recommend that you use one for this. Such a large model. will be particularly effective on the plain metallic areas, plain silver areas. I love the way it just rusts the metal up. So now the hatch, just working it down to the hatch where the legs are. These long bristles helping to, to work that in. his cap now the just 
working on top of the shoulder pad here. Now the pistol, that'll rust that up nicely. Very quick results of this. I said you could almost just do this shade here and you know your model's going to be sort of tabletop standard ready to fight so if I was desperate for a game I could, I could use this justifiably here it would look pretty good but this is still your basic stage and there's going to be a lot of improvements to make to this as we go along it's starting to look good now, just seeing if there's any areas of mischief, this back hatch needs to be covered. It's working the brush in, these long bristles really reach in the areas that I need them to go. It's looking okay. Uh, this glove. All the way around. Yep. Uh, I will paint under here, it's been sprayed silver, so I'll just Get that covered. And underneath here as well. And then just looking to suck up the spare. And that's about it. So I'm just going to set him down. Maybe let him dry upside down. But uh, there you go. So that's what your, your results you're looking for. You can see it shading the metallic work just nicely. Let me just redo this a bit. There we go. You can see the way Jack Games Workshop have, have sculpted it here, the, the rust effect and so on. Just goes into that detail. Yeah, fantastic. So, happy enough of that. Looks okay. So I'm just going to use this technique. That was quite quick there for the head. I'm just going to uh, carry on here and coat the whole model in this seraphim sepia wash. Alright, so wash is complete here. It doesn't take it too long, not too bad. Uh, and since I've, I've painted this, I'd, I've taken a look at some of the panels and changed a few around as well. I did say I'd probably change some uh, as the uh, models painted up. And so there was a black panel just here. I've changed it to white and then put a wash, put the, the seraphim sepia wash over the top uh, just to link that all in. I think it looks good just all as white. Keeping a few as silver though. And on top of this shoulder pad, here I've switched that from black to white and washed it and then this was all red, I've changed that to black. Just a little bit too much uh, red going on with this one, I think I overdone it with the red. I think that's what was causing a bit of an imbalance. So uh, this panel here was red, I swapped that to black. This panel here is red, swapped that to black as well just to uh, just to bring it all in as, as mostly black. A bit of red here and there, but it's your own personal preference and choice. Uh, we're just trying to tie in, I've, I've referenced my other orc vehicles and the Gorkonaut and so on. Uh, and it's, it's not too much red going on, um, so I want to keep that running. Uh, that's the whole theme, so the whole army ties in nicely. But uh, start up to you, you can paint as many or as few panels as you wish. I would say if you, just the panels, if you do too few, then it looks like you've sort of been lazy and, and haven't done enough, you've leave too much metal work. So it is good to try and paint as many panels. Uh, I'll say as many as you can, but just to paint a good amount of them. But you see how this wash now, has just pulled all the colours together, so it's linked the whole model together and it's shaded it up, uh, looking really nice actually, so I'm a lot happy with how the model looks here. And you can see around the back there, shaded in nicely. And I have shaded underneath, not this part here, but uh, I've shaded here and underneath uh, the model as well. So, that's all of that. And there's the, the arm just there as so well. Everything's shaded in. The great thing about the shades as well is that they they add a layer of resilience to all of your paintworks. Now that black, which would rub off quite easily, once it has the wash on top, actually makes it a lot more resilient as well. So uh, it's great to get these shades onto the model. So looking good already with the shade, we're going to put another shade across uh, the model here. Again, covering the same areas, everything except the orc flesh that's already been shaded. Uh, so the next colour is your Agrax Earth shade. So again, that's brown, but it's very dark brown. It's good for uh, the deeper... Uh, details here to get them shaded in nicely so you're looking for just a good even coverage of this and uh, but you don't it to puddle you just want to get a good coverage and that'll add another layer of shade here uh, to uh, this orc stumper so 
Again, I'll just show you on the head, I'll show you these, these panels here on the seal box. Again, just taking my large dry brush here. And you'll see it darken the shading right down. Across the whole model and just working it in. Those horns can be done as well, that'll give the extreme shade on that. I'm just gathering up the spare wash here. I don't want it puddling. So and just let's light up this brush here. This is really good for working into the getting into all the nooks and crannies. You can see it's shading that up pretty good. So that's a darker tone, picks out all the details nicely. And all around the top here. Take the brush in. This brush is if you're going bigger, you're not going to dip into the pot. This one dips into the pot just about, so it's about as big as you want to go. The front plate here in white, uh, I'm going to go try and get in between these eyes. One and two. And these rivets. But other than that, there's no point. Just make it harder for me to paint that white later on. So I'm just going to take rub the excess off of there and keep that quite clean. There's no point in putting the darker shade onto that. Around this crown, this crest that he has on his head, and working the brush right into all these details. You don't want to miss areas, it looks terrible when you've missed whole areas and you've got clean silver areas that haven't been shaded. And then just around his clothing, just going to top up here, drain a bit of the wash away, and I'm just going to work now into the, the hatch area here. Step in the brush right in there to try and get the details picked out. Down to his shoulder pad. Slugger pistol here. A slugger. The hat. His back. This hatch. And then now it'll be this front plate as well. All underneath. In case the head's ever removed during a game, if it explodes, I want to leave a bit of the model behind. And then this sort of front face plate as well to pick out. Just take a, a little bit more wash with virtually there now. But I've shaded him up pretty quick. Make sure I work this right into all the details here. I'm happy enough with how this has come out. Okay, just looking around to see if there's anywhere else. No, details picked out really good. It's like in between all the plates here, it's now nice and darkly shaded. All the details picked out. You really are bad. letting all the decent sculpting work that's been done uh, work for your advantage. But that's the head there. Uh, nicely shaded down now. Make sure I catch this horn as well. So, no, that's excellent. Right, so happy enough with that. So just going to do the same process across the entire Stumper model. Alright, so wash complete here. You can see it's knocked it down another tone. Uh, really starting to look good here. I haven't changed any of the panels, quite happy with it. But again, it may well change later on. If you want to change your panel, just uh, paint the colour that you wish. And then just apply those two washes over the top just to blend it in uh, with what already has been done. So it's still at this stage not too late for changes. What you can do, see here, I'm just collecting areas where it's starting to gather some of the wash starts to puddle or form sort of drips just trying to pick those out just to sort of guide it a little bit as it dries it's sort of half drying here because it's a bit dried on top already again it hasn't taken too long uh, but that's toned that all in really well so all the details picked out for you all these panels on the back yeah, looking really good so very happy with this here at this stage so wash is complete and you can see I've done all the washes on here, see how it's nicely rusted and shaded up all of the, the metal work here, looking really good. And then there's the, the head there as well. So the next stage then, the third stage, on base colours is the first stage, wash is the second stage, and then uh, the third and final stage is to pick out all the details, so all the chipping effects we're going to do, rust effects, a uh, bit of weathering and dust around the feet here as well, picking out all the details, painting these orcs, getting all the flesh painted up and so on. So that's all to come next, and each stage is just going to 
bring this model uh, to life uh, more and more. So, uh, ready to go on to the next stage. It's up to you what colours you want to go for, first of all. I think you may well try and um, strengthen the, the red and the black needs to be picked out here. So we've only done one coat of each of those and the washes on top. Now I want to uh, re-emphasise those colours uh, by painting over them. But we'll go on to the next uh, stage here once this is dry. Alright, so we're going to start with these uh, colours now. So I've gone to the Evil Suns Scarlet and I've got a brush here that's sort of a uh, it's an old base coat brush. I'm deliberately taking quite a rough brush here and it's to force me to not be too neat. I just want to dab on to the main areas of the panel and that will be enough. So it's quite quick. Just simply got the brush at an angle here and then just dabbing it on. And you see I'm quite loose going around the rivets. Don't need to in real fine detail go around them but just to patch out the main panel like so and leave the rest shaded. So this is nice and quick this way and then a bit on the the horn just here I'm just going to try and straighten the bristles up a little bit I want to be neat don't want to get this red anywhere else I'm just picking that out you can see how quick this is bit there bit on the other side uh, bit on his shoulder pad done nice and quick bit on the shoulder pad here and this panel here it's got a texture on it so I'll drag the brush across and try and pick that up a little bit if I can. Just like so with the brush. Easily picked out here. It's a nice strong pigment to this red. Got a bit on the black there by accident. Just take a wet brush and rub that off. That's pretty much it. That didn't take very long at all. It's a bit here on this slugger actually. That side and black on the other side. Okay, so that's it done. Nice and quick just to go over the whole model now uh, with this red and that'll be the red picked out ready and then later on we can uh, add some chipping effects later. Alright so that's all the red picked out here, uh, just sort of highlighting across, it just strengthens all of the red, gives it a nice uh, warm card here. I'm happy with how this is coming out at the moment so just really just repeating what I showed you up close just across the whole of the model, also picked it out here across uh, the weapons also. Now for the black uh, the black looks pretty good now with the shading on it and all sealed in but uh, you can still see it's a bit untidy, you can still see brush strokes and so on uh, and I'll zoom, zoom in in a second and you'll see what I mean but I'm going to give a second coat of the black just to strengthen that next so if you can see that, there's, uh, you can see it here, see the brush strokes, that's only from one coat so uh, just the second coat here and again same as before just wanting to fill this in and one more coat of this will give you a nice solid black panel Just tidy the whole thing up. But you don't need to be too strict again. Just go around the main, the main part of the panel like so. Very, very quick. Doesn't need to be very slow at all. And this will, one thin coat will be enough to get that black nice and solid. Because you're not painting all the edges of the panels, you're just skimming across uh, the main surface. That speeds things up as well. So this shouldn't take too long. Again, you see I'm not being too strict, just flying around, just catching the main parts of these panels here. Shouldn't be a problem. That's that front plate dump. Like that. It strengthens up. Starting to get some nice crisp colours now. You see the red nice and strong, and the black as well. And when the white's done with all the effects, it'll really start to pop out. And when we do the chipping later on, that'll really start to make the model look nice and smart so just repeat what I've shown you there across all the black it'll take a while there's a fair bit of black on this model but it's so it's a very quick technique so it shouldn't take you very long all right so that's all the black panels picked out it really has strength and you can even see it from here it's strengthened the model nicely and those colors are looking good and strong so uh, red and black done next is one of the larger colors as well it's that uh, coppery metallic color there's plenty of it here in the model so you're going to have a final highlight to that and for that you're going to use your hash up copper and we're going to mix it about 50 50 of rune fang steel, so the bright steel, mix that together, and that'll give you a highlight color uh, just to pick out this metallic that's going to be uh, a separate color from the steel. Just two different metallics going on, I think it looks really good. Uh, and so we'll pick that up next. Uh, there isn't really any on this head here, so I'll zoom in on part of the, uh, the main body here, or maybe we'll pick out an area around here, and it will show you the, the difference of when this highlight goes on. All right, so I'll maybe, maybe just drag the brush across here because it'll be easy for you to see. So I'm taking uh, Hashak Copper. I've got a 
palette here. So hush up copper. And then we'll see about 50% with the steel. We'll see how that mixes up. Right, a bit more. But nice and bright. Not so it's too much silver that you lose the copper effect. But you want it bright enough so it makes a proper highlight here. In this case, you're just dragging that over the detail. That's okay, I might strengthen that a little bit. Get a little bit more silvery. And then I'm just dragging that's better. And you're looking to drag it over the top of the details. Should be straightforward. So yeah, that's gone on well and that's lifted that nicely. So I can rotate that and you can see the difference here between the original colour with the washes on it and there it is all picked out. Um, so I've got an older brush here again gently going to drag it down and catch the ends of these bullets I might use a finer brush just to get in there uh, and then things like this uh, exhaust vent type thing here just run the brush over that nice and tidy but it's like a sort of dry brushy it's got a wet dry brush almost you know a lot of paint on the brush here dragging it across the detail and that picks that out nicely as well so again, uh, it's pretty quick to be honest, the, the red, the black, and now this one so far, uh, pretty fast just to get these colours uh, highlighted and then ready for the, it's the chipping that's going to take ages later on, it's one of the last things to do, uh, but one of the most effective, make the model look great, but these other uh, bits that we're doing here, the build up to it, uh, not too time consuming really, you can get quite quick, again I'm just going to pick out uh, the barrel there just to give an idea of how that can look, so I'm going to go over the whole of the model, all the copper here and just pick this out, it shouldn't take too long. All right, so I've done the copper piping uh, all across the model here, uh, just looking like that. So wherever that copper is, uh, just do that highlight. So next color I want to do is to uh, repaint this green piping. So warpstone glow uh, is the color I have here. And again, I've got a. I'll maybe go for something a bit neater. So I'll take a. Just one here, a base. This base brush got a pretty good tip on it here, I want to be pretty tidy, uh, but just looking to repaint these here in green. Like so, I'm going to do one coat that's thick enough, I'm just sort of dabbing the paint on, should pick these out nicely. And again, you see it doesn't take too long, that green's picked out, and again another colour to brighten this thing up. There's the green just tucked in there as well. So I'm just going to go over the whole of the model, uh, just picking out that green. Now also uh, with the black, uh, any of the black piping as well, I've been picking that out, cleaning that up as well, by adding another coat to that, as well as the black panels. But uh, we'll get this green done uh, next. All right, so that's the green done. I'll just show it to you on the gun here as well. It's been picked out and strengthened and added in. Next, uh, is this bestial brown, Mornfang brown? And just looking to, you don't have to do this one, but looking just to re pick out the straps here on any of the orcs or grots. So, really, it's just this orc uh, stomper commander here. Just looking to pick out and strengthen the straps there. Again, very straightforward. Just running around underneath his arm, there's a strap running, and on the other side also. I usually do this for the orc boys, so I'm going to do it with this one here. Run that strap around to the front. So it didn't take very long. That's it. I don't think I painted any for the grots, so that is virtually we've got the top here. That's virtually that done. Okay, finished. So it's just a minor detail. It's only taken a few seconds to get that done. So uh, we'll move on to another highlight colour. Alright, so next we'll go for this orc flesh that you can see here. Same process as uh, in the other painting tutorials for this one. Um, so, you'll need these three colours here. Flesh gets yellow, warboss green and ceramite white. Uh, you could go pure warboss green, but I've found that's a little bit too dark for the highlight that goes on later. Looking just to do two, two colours here. So I'm going to take the warboss green uh, onto my palette. You'll see the colour when it goes on. But majority wall boss green and just a tiny little bit of uh, flash gets yellow. 
So I'm talking about just the tip of a brush amount, just to yellow it up a little bit. And about, again, small amount of the Ceramite White. Mix it all together, Maybe a tiny tab more yellow. Just warmed it up a bit. It's a bit too bright, so I'm going to turn it down by adding more wall wash green. Tiny drop of water. Okay. So that's the kind of colour, and again, it's a little bit too light, so a bit more wall wash green. I was looking for just a shade brighter here, but not very much. You'll see it as it goes on. And it's looking to repaint the skin nice and neat here. Yep, so. There's his chin. You see that colour brightens up, but it's not too overpowering. Catching his bottom lip. Like that, so you can see that colour there. Now I've got a, a I've got a very tidy brush here with a nice tip because I, I really do want to be neat on this one. Just catching the edge of his mouth, going all the way around these teeth. Um, I really am just picking out the highlights here. It's around the eyes and the nose all being picked out here. And then his ears. And just going around and tidying the whole thing up. Uh, and then the arm, you can see the arm there. I'll paint that just to show you. So now I'm going really neat up to the edge of his cloth here, the vest that he's wearing. Then nice and tidy around these muscles. Just leaving the extreme cracks and crevices here filled in. But everything else can be painted up. Looking something like that. It's quite straightforward, just using the sculpting work that's been done for you as a guide. I'm just leaving the extreme. Uh, shading in so I'll run around the whole of the, the model here but that arm gives you a pretty good guide of of how to do it like so so something like that so uh, I've painted all around like that the next is the, the final highlight so again it's the wall wash green dab of the yellow and then more of the ceramite white this time just to make a brighter highlight color Something like that on the brush. You'll see it as it goes on to the model here. So I'm just the very extreme highlights. That's going to be the lips. You see that going on. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit more, just to give you an idea. Yes, yeah, so you can see it going on to the lips there. Running around. I'll put a bit on his chin just to highlight that up. The ears, the shape of the ears, uh, his under the eyes here, and the nose, and then the lips on top as well. Nice tip on the brush, brush, nice and neat, sharp highlight here. So it's giving you an idea. Uh, and then running the corner of the jawline, I'm going to run along there as well, just to. Give it that chiselled sort of look. And then maybe this highlight run down. Like so. There you go. No, it looks alright. Uh, then for the uh, hands, I'll go for the knuckles. Just a, just a dot on the knuckles, not the whole finger. Then just go around to the next set of knuckles and just dot onto those. That really helps to emphasise them. Yeah, you can see it there picked out. Uh, just capture the knuckle on the trigger finger and on the arms just leaving the whole area just the way it's been painted apart from the elbow just pick out the tip of the elbow uh, with that color see that's going to save you loads of time so there's no need to go around highlighting it all again i've already done that once and then just picking out this elbow here just giving a bit of shape to it and again picking out the knuckles on this finger this hand Knuckle that, knuckle that, knuckle that, and that's about it. Yeah, happy enough. Just going to capture these ears from on top. Make sure they're picked out as well. Yeah, so that gives you a uh, look something like that. That's picked out nicely, nice and tidy. Yeah, next will be the teeth. We'll get the mouth sorted out here, so you can see it's all needs to be picked out. So. Uh, colours then, Shabti Bone, 
and, and then I just mix a highlight with some ceramite white to give a nice light bone colour and just looking to very neatly pick out these teeth like so and the sculpting work's been done for you so it should just be a case of picking them out with the tip of the brush and they've all been shaded so yeah they're coming out okay so you can see that really helps lift the face when you start picking out these teeth like so so now you've got yeah teeth on there uh, fingernails just catch the end of the finger just put a fingernail on there's one here as well and one here like so and it does make a difference I like putting the fingernails on and then there's a set holding onto the, the gun here it is a de little detail but it can be seen there if you can see that picking up the fingernails just there and there's one just on top fun Brilliant, that really does help to complete that. I'm right, very happy with that. So there's a little bit to do on the grots, just their toenails usually and their teeth uh, to pick out and that'll be them finished as well. All right, there's a, a tiny bit of detail to it. This, i just describe it to you. It's the, just the gum line. Take a little bit of corn red mixing it with white uh, to make a sort of a pinky color. There's a tiny bit of gum line. on the model just above the teeth there you, you'll see it sculpted uh, it's not on this orc head so I, I haven't been able to show you it's on one of these grots here very minor detail but uh, just check the teeth and if you see they've sculpted a little gum line on there then you're just looking to mix up a color sort of that shade there that uh, lighter pinky color and that's just taking a bit of corn red and a bit of ceramite white mixing it together and then just pick out the gum line but it'll take you a few seconds there, I've angled the model so you can see just above his teeth. There's a little gum line running along. It's worth picking that out. If their teeth are, are showing like that, sometimes that gum line will be sculpted on. You can see it. But just common sense where it is. Uh, there'll be a little ridge, and you'll be able to pick it out again. It's been sculpted for you. So there it is. But that's how the grots look. Here's that one. Again, same process as we've seen for the orc. Uh, commander on top. There's that one. Again, see the elbow highlighted and just the knuckles. And then here there's one on top, same process as well. And again with the teeth, fingernails and so on being picked out also. Right, next, if you've picked it out, there's a red uh, targeting thing here. Just show you how to pick that out. Uh, you can see it's been it's the red, it's been shaded already. Because it, it's so small, don't need to repaint with Eagle Sons of Scarlet. I'm just going to go straight to Troll Slayer Orange. Now I'm going to pick out the bottom third, right hand side of this with this orange very straightforward but it'll pop out and, and stick out be worth doing so you see I've picked it out there immediately that's made an impact and then I want to take a dot of ceramite white and just put it in the top left hand corner small dot see if I can touch it in just there okay that seems to have worked okay you see the way that pops out Excellent little bit of detail to add in there. Again, it's just taking me a few seconds, uh, but it's well worth doing. And people will see that, or I will be drawn to it. And it's a nice little bit of detail, especially around the head uh, of this Orc Commander. Now, you just check over the model. There might be sort of sighting equipment here and there, different places where you can do this. There's a few places here on the model, but again, uh, check over and add that in. You can go for red, you can do blue, green, whatever colour you want to do, but red, uh, red pops out nice, nice contrasting colour against the green there of the orc skin. So that's that bit done. Uh, you can see I've painted one of the horns now. See it all highlighted up? I'll show you how to do the other side here uh, just to get the horns painted up next. So look at the gradually fade this in. You see the way it's fading? You've got this sort of striped effect here just to represent the, the horns here. So that's the way it's been shaded. I then want to take my palette here and I've got a decent brush I'm taking uh, the Steel Legion Drab. I'm going to add a Shabti bone to it, about 50 50, to make a highlight colour here. So I'm going to take my palette here, and you can see it's just there. I want it to flow nicely, so I'm going to add a little bit of water to it from the pot here. This will be my first 
first colour. So you're just looking to use the brush at an angle and to drag it along. Like so. And letting the tip just move along this horn here. Trying to follow the grain of it. Let's go on something like that. It's semi sculpted, quite shallow. I'm trying to follow that if I can. It's quite difficult though, but that's come out okay. And then I want to go neat and tidy up to this edge where the metal strip is. It's nice and tidy up to that. And then uh, again, tidy up to the strip up here. Continue on. I'm virtually going to fill this in because this is the, the lighter part of the top here. So looking like that so far. Then I want to go for again. I'm going to put it on the palette. Pure shabti bone now. And again, I want to add a, a bit of water here just to give it a nice flow. It's got plenty of water on it. Uh, not too much that you lose the pigment, but a nice flow so that you can get some nice sharp runs of the brush here. So I want to be careful on this one. I'm going to pick this one out, nice and sharp and tidy. It's not bad. And again, nice and tidy up to this metallic strip here. I'm sensing that brush is running a bit dry, so I'm going to a bit more water on the palette with my shabti bone. That's better than dragging the brush around. Look, it's something like that now. I see it's getting close to the other side, the finish. Then up the top here, I want the streaky effect now. On it. Like so. Now, remember to paint both sides. I'm just showing you one side here, but paint both sides at the same time on the other side here. And then you want to go uh, Shabti Bone Ceramite White. Again, a bit of water just to get this flowing. I want to go for nice sharp lines running down now. Oops, got my finger in there quickly just to make that mistake. So you can really see the lines now. Yeah, that's forming up quite nicely. Nice and tidy. Something like that. Again, just picking out the details here. Like so. And if a final highlight of of uh, ceramite white and, and some of shabti bone so it's a and it's your final highlight just to crisp the whole thing up so this is where you do your really tidy finishing line especially on this strip of metal here so i'm just doing a final very tidy run along there and then running the brush down there's a fair bit of water added to this just to really help it flow you get something looking like that. And then again here, I go nice and tidy around this strip of metal. And then run the brush up. And make sure that tip is that solid almost white colour. So you've got something looking like this. There. And then I can just I'm add a bit here just to match up the tones. Dumps, that's the horns picked out. Quite a feature, so it's worth taking your time. I'll just finish the other side, and that's uh, that stage finished. Really, I'm making good progress here. Just sort of getting all the little minor areas dusted and finished off. The main area is going to be this chipping up effect, which will take ages. And that'll be the, but it'd be a nice thing to save to last and get all the other minor details out of the way and done. All right, so horns done. Next color we're looking to do is the the glow from these lights here. So I'll pick on. I'll pick out this big one. I'm taking uh, 
your shabti bone, mixing it with some flash gets yellow, just to yellow it up a little bit, make it different from the other bone uh, highlighting that we've done. Then mixing it with a bit of ceramite white just to lighten the whole thing. A bit of water, you'll see the colour go on. Just the colour that's here on my on my brush. And I'm just looking to neatly pick in between these squares here. I think that's not quite yellow enough, so I'm gonna add a little bit more of the flash gets yellow. I want an effect here for this, make it look like it's a light. That's better. I'm just neatly picking out these squares. The, the paint's quite watered down, so that'll give you more control over the paint as it goes in. But uh, no, it's going on nicely, nice and tidy. So you can see it's starting to to glow a bit more, and it'll stand out quite nice. And then with that grill, I will pick that up later on when we come to the the chipping effect with the steel later on. So there's those two, there's a few, there's this big one and there's a set of them over here as well, just generally pick those out and that'll be that stage finished. Alright, so uh, next colour is the, the white, so I've got to panel out all of the white here and uh, we're going to be picking out the, the white panels, like the face plate here for example, and then also any panels where you want to paint your checkered pattern uh, and any also uh, like patterns on the, the rockets and missiles as well, but I'll show you that after I've, I've painted those areas. But I'm going to show you how to paint one area here, that's this front panel here, it's a good example. Um, so taking uh, a larger brush that has some control, and I'm just looking to sort of dab the paint on. And again, I'm just looking to paint the front of the plate, it's not worried about the edges, uh, but it's just the front of the plate. And you can see I'm going over the rivets here, we'll pick those out later. Uh, with the washes and so on. I found that painting around all the rivets just takes forever and there's no need to, you can just add that rusty effect back in with the washes a lot quicker later on. So I'm just looking really to to repaint the whole panel here. Only around the largest of rivets, these rivets here, uh, I'm going to keep those metal so I'm just going to go around those quite tidily, like so, and then just tuck that in, make sure I'm all the way around. And work the brush around that way, that's good. So I'm looking for a nice sharp finish to this. And then, uh, as I said, I'm only painting the front of the panel, not the sides, so it's going to save time, just work way up to the edge and then leave it at that. And then I'm just going to dab, dab like so, to just, I don't want lines, streaky lines of where I've painted, I want this dab done here with the brush up to the edge like that okay so that's done it looks pretty good on on camera there but uh, I'm going to let it dry probably go for a second coat and if I'm not entirely happy with it I'll put a fur coat on just to make that nice and solid generally solid you know it doesn't matter it doesn't have to be strict it's not as clean cut and pristine perhaps as other factions of so you can afford to be leave it a little bit rough here and remember you're going to put your shades and washes over the top later on. This is the real iconic point here that the white's massive impact colour here. So all the white panels, areas that you want to add a pattern on or a checkered pattern onto later, pick those panels out as well. Make them all the same, nice and solid and ready uh, for doing your special effects on later. Um, so I'll let that dry, put a second coat on and then paint the rest of the white areas on the model. Right, so paint a load of white panels and strengthen those up. I'm going to show you how to paint the checkered pattern now. Uh, so one of the tricks here to paint this up, quite straightforward really, and it's well worth doing. I've been uh, already painting some checkered patterns on the model already. So you can see it here uh, on the big chainsaw, there on the side, a number of other places as well. It looks great for orcs, it really does look good. Uh, and it's very straightforward to do. So I've uh, just taken the Abaddon Black. A nice brush with a good sharp tip. I'm taking some bad and black and then uh, making sure it's a nice wet brush and a watery version of the or nicely watered down uh, black here so it's got a real good flow to it. So what I want to do is make sure uh, that these squares are evenly spaced apart so I'm going to paint my first line uh, running down dead centre and down. Like so, because it's orcs, you don't have to be 
lines are straight, this is the main thing to get right, but if the line itself is a bit jaggedy and so on, it doesn't really matter because it's orcs, you know, they're, they're slapping the paint on, so you've got a bit of leeway there. But I want to go central there uh, to divide that evenly, and then I want to go, again, just keeping this paint with a nice flow to it. Don't want cloggy paint, it's got to flow nicely here from the brush. Uh, and I want to go dead center again. And this is just making sure that my squares are all even inside. So there's that one. And then dead center there. And then running down. Like so. If I start, say, it's on the left here and go along, I might get to the end and I've not got enough space to try and, and it, you know, it's, there's too much white left here or too little and it's all wrong. But if you break it up like that, the way I showed you, so the middle first, then break it down, now they're nice and even in size. So then I'm going to start from the bottom here because it's a nice straight edge. This one's all crooked at an angle. And I want to match this size here that's already, uh, they've already divided up. So I want to get it the same kind of size. So I think I'll look along there. Looks okay. And then along here. Running along. And then along here, like so, and then yeah, it is jagged there, and it's at a, an angle, so it's going to run along like this, something like that. So that's why I wanted to start on the straight edge. So then that's still divided up into the squares, and you simply then take a, a blob of the black and then fill in. So we'll say we'll go for this one here. And you just fill the squares in there with the paint. So you can paint all the grids in one go if you want. I've just been doing one grid at a time, just focusing on one panel at a time. But um, quite generous with the paint here, so just sort of blobbing it on and then working it in. And again, it's nice flow to it, so just really pushing it into the panel here and f filling it in. Then it's going to be this one. Because I don't want a ghosty white underneath, so I'm being quite generous with the black. And I could get away with just doing one coat of this. Next one. Do the whole panel here just to show it doesn't have to take too long. There's a little bit at the top of that one. And then be this one. Now these squares are quite big, but that's, this is it's a big stomper model, but you can go for smaller. Even to the point where it's uh, small enough to go on like an Orc Boy's shoulder pad. There's plenty of Orc Boys that I've painted this pattern onto. Same process, just a lot sort of smaller scale. And we put the washes over the top of this and chip it all up. It'll blend in nicely to the rest of the model. That one there. It doesn't really look right until all the panels are filled in. So that one. And then one more. And just as this last one's finished, it will start to look right. There we are, like so. Just fill that one in a bit more. Yeah, happy enough of how it's come out, and that's your checkered pattern. Very straightforward, as uh, that way, and uh, I'm just going to repeat this process now across the rest of the board. Don't want to go overboard with this, just panels here and there. Uh, if you feel you don't have enough, just paint a white panel somewhere else, like maybe here, for example, and then just go ahead with that checkered pattern as big and or as small as you want. But um, I'll maybe show you this one here. So you see it there, just put one at the top and that's a much smaller version just there. But exactly the same process, so wherever you want to put these checkered pattern panels in. Then really it's going to be the same similar kind of process for these rockets here. Uh, you can go for your... I'll maybe show you what you can do with those as well. So instead of black we're switching to white. Here, just give this one a 
a shake here. So for the rockets, you've got license to paint them however you wish. But uh, let's say uh, this red one here. So there's different types of patterns. There's ones that have already been sculpted on for you. So these, I'm going to pick these out in white. That, that work's already been done. So it'll just be a case of going around with the white and filling them in like so. Some of the rockets, there's plates here that have already been uh, done for you. So this is like a face, this is the eye here. Pick that out with the white paint, that's all been sculpted on for you. A couple of coats there. You see that? And then you've got license to paint your own as well. Attempt to do a, 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 a flame here. I'll see if I can freehand this just to show you. It looks quite good for the orcs. So I put a line across here. And then I just swiggle this along. And then taper it off. And then fill it out. Thicker at the top end here. And it gradually thins out, so... Something like that. Does look very cool for the ox if you can uh, do these patterns. But if you're not too confident, you don't have to worry about it. But that one's quite a straightforward one to do. Uh, and then it's just a case <coughs> of repeating the same design next to it. So that's your starting base. And then it's a wiggle out in I'm trying to match the previous like so again the orcs will freehand it themselves so it's not going to be too much worry if it's not identical you can imagine them just slapping these designs onto the panels here so you've got a bit of license to be a bit more loose here with your patterns I think I got away with that one okay so you can link these up might just link these together just to finish off yeah so yeah happy enough I think it's well worth doing so there's those the spirals to do uh, you can pick out the existing panels and so on but I'll get that done as well in this model but uh, you don't have to copy me you can do as much or as little as you want you can introduce a bit of checkered pattern on there if you want as well it look good also uh, so uh, that's I'll, I'll get this finished here and you'll see the uh, the uh, designs been picked out here as well. All right, so uh, I'll show you what I've done with the rocket here, or the rockets. So that's that pattern there. You can see the flame effect and it looks pretty good. Uh, then I've picked out the details here. I've done a bit of graffiti as well. I have to do that for the orcs. So again, just taking the white paint, uh, take that with a skull drawn on. Just expect the orcs to. Write some slogans on these for these rockets to let loose. Kaboom's a great one to add on to this big uh, rocket just here. So, just give you an idea of what you can do. I think there's, it's really got these teeth here, so I'll leave that at that, and then it's going to chip up quite nicely with the red. Again, the details picked up on this one. You can see the teeth are sort of sculpted on for you. I'm going to go too over the top, but just a little bit. I think that just adds a bit of interest to those rockets. And then when they're all chipped up uh, and rusted, they'll look pretty good. Uh, and then I've done a a spiral here on this one. Just taking my time. Uh, I copied that off of the uh, the box cover art uh, for that. So that's all those colours. Well, that's the white done there. Uh, the checkered patterns as well picked out. It's the on the shoulder pad, sort of larger squares for that one because it's the main sort of shoulder pad. And then around the back as well. So there's a fair bit on on there. And again, sort of the emphasis is uh, the centre of the center of the model here so you can see that's where you see that larger checker pan just on the shoulders looks good I was going to add some checker to here I'm not going to leave that now actually I'm not going to add checker to this don't want to disrupt that design um, so I'll leave it at that I can always add it later on uh, and then a bit of check it here and there see not too much we've got two over the ball two two over the top not really any around the back here uh, apart from this shoulder pad that you can see 
So next stage really is to try and weather this here. It's too stark, too white, it needs to be toned in. Um, and so we'll use some washes to, uh, to tone the white down. Okay, so uh, the white panels all painted up here. What we're gonna go for next is to, to weather these. It's very stark looking here. Uh, it needs to be weathered down, so there's chipping effects to do. And then there's this weathering uh, technique as well, so this rusty effect here. Uh, it looks particularly good on the white panels. So it makes quite a difference. I've got serif from sepia and a brush with a nice sharp tip because I'm going to paint some uh, rust marks sort of running down. So you're thinking where, say around this rivet here, the water, you know, if it rains and so on, it gets wet, it's going to collect around there, the rust, and if rust does occur, which it's bound to, it'll, the water will run down this direction. So I just simply run the brush down. Go as far as you want. And then you can use your finger just to break it up a little bit. And then, I don't want to do two, so I'll just put the rust around this one. And I might just dab a bit more in just to strengthen it. And then each of these rivets that's sculpted on for you, I think they would rust up as well. So I'm going to see it's starting to, to rust up here. And now, I'll say this rivet here, it's gonna, we're going to let it run down to the next one. Then I'm going to dab it a bit with the finger just to break it up. I'm sort of almost smudged in a bit here. There's another one just at the bottom. There's a bullet hole. A couple of little nicks and marks. So I'm going to dab the brush in and then move the finger around and deliberately smudge it so that stark white starts to turn into a, a, a dirtied muddied white in some areas. And you see the difference stark and then now that rusty effect. There's a, a dip here on his like a uh, dent. I'm going to fill that with rust and then just going to follow these rivets around. Down the bottom just around these teeth here. Then I'm just going to do, I can drop a patch on, like that, and then just dab it with your finger. There, so you've got some marks on there. The nose here, I think there'd be a bit of, a bit shade it, and then there's a bit of rust coming down from that. And again, just going to break it up with my thumb. It's not too much effort to do, it's quite logical. Get these other rivets done. Can almost puddle this rust around them a little bit. You see what I mean? Instead of painting uh, with the white carefully around all of these rivets, just paint over them and then just drop in a bit of this wash later on. A lot easier. And not as, it's not too strong. It can look very strong when you paint. You've got this heavy shading going on. You paint around the rivets in white. It's uh, it doesn't look right too strong so you can just paint the whole thing in white anyway and then just drop a bit of rust on top and it looks better I think so just a little bit more but it really has taken the starkness out of that white it really has knocked it down and then plus we'll have uh, chipping effects to add on to this as well just gonna put a little bit of shading around these eyes there, I got a drop. I might just run that down. There. No, I think I'm happy enough with that. And that's about it. So that's the way that looks. I'll apply that across the rest of the model. I'm just going to show you a couple of little things that you can do. So next will be once you've done all of that shading, as much or as little as you want. We'll go two over the top. It's still meant to be a, a white panel at the end of the day. I think that's just enough just to break that up and give it that weathered look. White's a great colour to do that on. Uh, we then take uh, room frame steel. You want the iron breaker, and we'll do chipping here just to show you the effects that you can get. I'll maybe give you an example on the white, the red, and the black. So again, a good brush, nice and damp, so a good flow to it. Just adding a bit of water to my. 
you don't clog your paint, you're not get a very sharp chipping effect here. So I'm just adding a bit of water to this bit on the, the inside of the pot here. I want the silver to have a nice flow to it. Now I'm going to put on the white and I'm just going to pick out the tips of the rivets. And wherever you think, it's just logical, wherever you think uh, bashing and scraping would happen. There is a bend here on the metal, this ridge. So I think there'd be a bit of scraping along there, around the eyes. The eye slits around the bullet hole here. I might do a few sort of explosion lines, marks coming out like so. There's another bend in the metal. So if anything, anything knocks against it, it's going to be there that it chips. It's just logically thinking of where the chipping would take place. Another bit here. Definitely the corners. And you can dot a few of the rivets. You don't have to do all of them. Going to chip up the corner here. So you're chipping up the the edges of things where you think they would be bashed, so that's come out quite good. And again, it's helping to tone down this white. Around these teeth as well, the jagged areas of the teeth. Just takes the stark edge away from that. That corner. This corner. And it's time to tidy up any edges where, say, the white's overflown on around the edge here. I'll just tidy it up at this point. Just dabbing the paint on. And then you can go for uh, just random areas of dots and scrapes. So I'm going to put a little area here, just dot, 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 a few scrapes. Like that. And I'll maybe do one down here. The key's not to do too much. You can do two over the top. And the other one's a scrape where something's scraped along. Gotta be careful where I place this one. Don't want to do too much. I'll maybe put one just here. So I'm gonna two next to each other looks quite good. I want a nice clean sharp tip on the brush. And I'm gonna go one, two, there you go. So not too much. You can just see it there. I think that's enough. It's about enough on there. Don't wanna go too over the top, maybe run that down there. Okay, so that's the white. Gonna take a bit more water run the brush out on the tissue there just to give me a nice tip so yeah we'll go with this panel here of red red chips up particularly nice so again I'm gonna pick out the rivets just run the brush over the top of them like so then again logically it's gonna be the corners so I'll catch this corner and this edge not painting I'm sort of dabbing the brush and creating all these chip marks on there then you can go for little clusters of chips, <laughs> like that, like so, and then scrapes as well. So I'll show you another example. I'll go for but one scrape. Looks doesn't look quite right. A couple next to each other, like so. Put a scrape in there, like that. It's such, it's not too bad for speed. And then just next to this black panel here, so I'm going to pick out a lot of these big rivets chip them up like so and the same principle again corners that corner this corner a little cluster we really don't do too much so that will do for that panel but you see the way it just brightens the whole thing up and again it does help to unify the model when you see the same chipping and weathering uh, across the whole Thing. For silver as well, silver panels, so they would have been shaded nicely for you. But same thing again, you can just catch the edge of them, just to enhance them. And you can emphasize a little bit of the uh, sculpting work just there, but don't do too much. Just to emphasize that a bit more. Catch the edge of that. Some areas you'll, you really will start to build up quite a, a quick technique on this. Catch the edge of that, the edge of that, and we've done, we've done that whole area there. Then uh, areas like this, I just want to catch some of the metal work here, so I'll, I'll run the brush down the side of that. 
but not the whole thing. I'll leave it a bit shaded at the bottom. I'll tidy up these rungs, just flick the brush over the top of them. Brilliant. Then just keep going, you've got machinery type stuff, just maybe flick the brush over the top of that bit. The rivet at the end here, catch these edges, catch these edges, and that edge. And happy enough with that. Now that was quick, you see the shading work's been done for you, you're just sort of flicking the brush across the top just to catch the details that are already sculpted for you. So I have to, you know, don't think I've got to spend ages going in all the edges, it'd be super neat. You know, this isn't this isn't a Space Marines chapter where you're trying to pick out all the edges of the armor. This is just a chipping effect. You can just flick the brush over the top of the metal work, pick out your edges. Yeah, and on camera there, I've shown you a, a fair bit. We've chipped up and shaded all of that. And we've done this area here, it hasn't taken too long. So it's gonna take a while. Uh, but you need to do those two processes then. I would do the the washes first, or the wash first here and all of your white, uh, and then start your chipping effect. It can take you a while, it's gonna be the longest part of the process, but perhaps the most effective, but chipping looks great. See, look, not chipped, it's very flat looking and clean. The panels are cool, you know, nice and clean. And then you go for chipping, and the whole thing just comes alive. So it's well worth doing and taking your time. Uh, try not to rush it, just get a steady pace, work your way through, and you, you know, a model this size, you're going to get really efficient at doing it after a while, and you'll soon work your way through the model. So I'm going to apply this technique to the rest of this orc stomper. So I, when I come to this jaw, for example, here, I know that a lot of bashing is going to take place on the very tip here. So, for example, you'll see that I'll do the edge. I'll do one here to show you like that. So it chipped up, and then I know there's going to be a lot of bashing and scraping, so I'm going to put a big sort of cluster not too much, but look, I'm going to do a fair bit because I know that's an area that's going to be bashed and scraped a lot. It's just logical there, that kind of effect, if you can see it. And you see the way it breaks up the black there? That's a great job. So, just giving you an idea. There's one that's been not been done, so clean. And then there's the one with the chipping effect. just breaks up nicely. So, I'll apply that across the rest of the model. Alright, so, uh, the chipping effect done uh, and then also the weathering technique all across the vehicle here so it's taken a fair while it's, but it's a massive step to get the model finished and a few stages left to go and this model's complete I mean already it's, it's looking virtually done so a little bit of weathering to do uh, around the base here some dust this thing's stomper is going to create a lot of dust so we'll add that effect to the bottom I'll show you how to do transfers here uh, in this video as well Add, and then a little bit of smoke to do coming from, or smoke effects to come from the chimney stack series. I'm not going to go too over the top of that, but a little bit to add on. It makes sense there'd be belching smoke coming from this thing. Let's rotate them around. And you can see all the chipping effects done here right, on all these rockets. And then all around here as well. Just gradually work my way around. I haven't really made much effort on the feet, so that'll save you a bit of time. I just chipped the top edge, pretty much just ran the brush around that and then left it because it's going to be weathered uh, and dusty anyway, so that'll save you a bit of time there. Uh, I did the, I worked on the, just started around the neck here, worked my way around, did one of the arms, painted this, this one's loose, painted that, and just gradually worked my way around, did all the way around the belly, and then finished off with sort of this area around here. Uh, so, you just gradually work your way around. It's not too bad going, and you gradually make progress and get it done. But it's well worth doing. It's a fantastic technique. Looks great. All this chipping effect on the plates really makes it look that metallic armoured plate sort of look. So it's well worth doing. And just following that rule, wherever you think there's going to be more chipping, just on, like, on the corners and so on, there's a fair amount of chipping on this uh, big chainsaw thing here. Obviously, that's going to be making contact with other metallic objects. There's going to be a lot of scrapes and bashes and chipping. In that area. So just use common sense for that. Don't go too over the top though, it's nothing worse than when you see, I mean this is as far as I would take it, we wouldn't add any more chipping and scrapes and that, otherwise it can look too much saturating it and it can spoil the model. So there's a couple of bits, I'll take the arm off here just to make it easier. It comes off quite easily by the way, it's just connected there so it came off quite easily if you need to, I'll just remove the head. I want to show you Gut Ripper's battle plan. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I took a I took the opportunity just to do some 
Yeah, you can do this with the orcs. So here's the plan. There's the Humis. Humis. It's orcs to go around the flank, and the rippers to attack from all the other angles. I just little touches like that. I think is, yeah, like you imagine the orcs all gathering at the back of the stomper here, and they listen to gut rippers. Very complicated <laughs> plan for the battle, and a little bit of, you know, Zog, Zog was here as well, you know, little things like that, and I think it's a nice touch to add, it's easily done, just take a nice sharp tip brush and add them in, bit of graffiti on the rockets here, kaboom, take that, eat this, have it, I think there's another one I wrote there as well, it's just some, some slogans and insults you can add, just sort of personalised touch, I can bring in the characters from this orc army and incorporate them even into the uh, this stomp here, like it all becomes part of the army, they, they all own this big thing together. So, it's awkward to capture this on camera, but if I roll this down ways, I'm going to, what I want to do, the priority is to, you take a bad and black, priority is to darken the inside, obviously the smoke is going to be on the inside of this. I'm going to use a rougher brush, I'm using quite a, a smart brush there, I'm going to use a bit more of a older brush with the bristles all sprayed out. And I'm going to stab the black on the inside of this, that's a priority, that's where the smoke would be belching. Again, I don't want to go too over the top of this, but priority is the inside there. I'll rotate the brush around, bring it up, and I'm just sort of flicking the brush over the edge. I'm sort of scrubbing it along here. Just to darken that. And again, if you want to use your finger or thumb, just to Dab it a bit, like so. Just there's a bit of smoke effect there, like that. Not too much. Priority is the inside there to make sure that's blackened out, and then a little bit on top there. And you can add more if you so wish. Again, just using my finger just to, to even that out. Yeah, that's the kind of effect. I'll do it to the other chimney stacks here, but I don't wouldn't do too much, just a little bit, just so that people know there's smoke belching uh, from these chimney stacks. Here. There, so something looking like that. You can see it's just a, a little bit of a dusting there. So just showing you that the the vent for the smoke is there, and then the other one on the right, the copper one, and the one at the top we've seen. Just a bit, that's all you need to do, not too over the top. I think it looks pretty good. So that's that done. I'll do transfers next because some of the dust may go over some of the transfers at the lower levels. So I think we'll do transfers next. So there's loads of panels uh, to put transfers on. Just use standard uh, orc transfer sheet. Looking at the example that Games Workshop have here, they haven't really used any transfers at all on this thing, uh, nor have they put it on the red version either so it's not much of a guide there to follow but it's just glyphs and markings and again it's licensed to put them wherever you want so obviously with these I don't want to use any ones with yellow in I don't want to introduce another color I'll, I'll leave the yellow out of it uh, but you've got the basic color scheme there you've got the white red and black uh, I'm going to choose so we'll look here. Let's say this red one here. Cut it out with a stand knife. In fact, you could almost just cut out half of these here and just dip them in the water. And you know, because it's actually, just looking at it, it's all one solid sheet, they're not individuals like some of the more modern transfer sheets, you do need to cut them out individually. And I've just dipped it in some water here, and then I'll leave it on the side of my palette just to soften up and wait till it slides. Then uh, you'll need 
some PVA glue. Just dot that on the pallet there. And that's to help the transfer stick and stop that ghosting effect that uh, it often happens when you put transfers on. And then I'm just going to use an older brush and choose a place to put this one on. So. I reckon, I reckon just here. So I'm going to prepare that area with a bit of water and PVA. Like so. This transfer's loose, so I'm going to pick it up with a brush. Like so. And place it on. Then I manoeuvre it around with a sharp tip of a knife, being careful not to split the transfer, but you could grip it that way and move it around very carefully till it's in position where you want. And then if you want to, you don't have to, you can take some tissue and being careful not to mis uh, displace it here, Just push that in to absorb the water and spare PVA and then let that dry. That's nicely in place, that PVA will hold it in place nicely, you won't get the ghosting effect uh, just there. So I could do a stack, I could do a couple of these next to each other, and then dot these about wherever you think they go, I mean, it's hard to know, you've already got a lot of artistic license here with the Yorks, uh, but around weapons and vents and so on, uh, and ammunition, those kind of areas, you can put your glyphs uh, around. Again, wouldn't go too over the top, just do a few. Uh, here and there, but it's a big model, so you'd be able to uh, place a good few of those around. There's other transfers on here as well, skulls and things. You can introduce, if you're too nervous about painting checker patterns or nervous about painting very small ones, then uh, you've got these patterns that you can introduce onto the model as well. So, uh, plenty of options available to use. So, add those on. Uh, once they're finished, uh, and in place, you then also want to just to blend them in is to add a little bit of chipping effect onto them. So just to, again, don't go to the top, a few dots here and there, just to merge them in with the rest of the model. So you don't want them looking like you've just transferred them on, you want them to be to blend into the rest of the effects that you've used. And, and then this one, not really, but if there's a white transfer, one with white in it, you can, uh, I mean, I'll dot it on there, but it's not gonna make any difference. You can dot a bit of seraphim sepia onto there, but it's, it's, especially if it's a white, again, to take away the starkness of any white transfers, just add a little bit of seraphim sepia the same way as we've done the white there earlier on. But I'm going to put, place some transfers around this model, again, wherever you want to go, but don't go too over the top, just here and there in different places, uh, just to add a bit of extra effect. And then once they're done, uh, then it's really just the dusting here around the feet and the lower part of the hull of this, and I think this model will be complete. Alright, so uh, transfers, I put one here, not too many, don't want to go over the top. Um, this one just down here, one there, one just tucked in the end of this, one just on there, one on the head, there's just one at the back again, not doing too much, don't want to go too over the top of these. I'll put a pair of them next to each other on this bit, will look quite good. So that adds another area of interest, so you've got like the checkered pattern going on, and a few glyphs here and there. Nicely, that's a bit of interest. Under three of them around here, just sort of this sort of engine room type type area. Uh, skull and crossbones just stuck on the back of that ammo container, and a few others here and there. But that gives you the idea. Not too many but on this uh, larger panel here. I'll put a couple of them there as well. So I think it's the last stage. I can't see anything else that needs to be done. So we're going to go for the steel legion drab. Now I think the dust would be all over the feet, then sort of around this kind of area here. So that's the kind of area I want to uh, make nice and dusty. A larger brush, one that I could scrub here. I'm going to damp it just with my mouth a little bit, just to add a little bit of moisture to it. Still Legion Drab, add, and then on the palette here, I'm just going to scrub it onto the palette first. And then we'll stab this into the the feet here. And it's working all right. So I'm going to go all around the feet, just stabbing it, making it nice and dusty. And then I'll also work my way up these panels. You see it's starting to 
make that a hazy kind of dust effect. A little bit stronger this time, a bit too much, so I'll just go to the feet and stab it out a bit. Come back to the panel here. So you see the chipping's already done, but the chipping's starting to get covered in dust as well. Which looks pretty cool. Done it on all the Orc vehicles, it does look good. Something like that. Yeah, and no, I'm happy enough with that. And yeah, then you've, it breaks up this solid panel, solid black panel's going all the way down, but then towards the bottom, uh, you've got some weathered ones. I think that looks very cool. So you can work your way up as high as you want. Just put a little bit of dust on the, the plan here, not too much. I'm just going to continue that on, but you can see a difference. There's a solid black panel, a bit too tidy looking going all the way to the ground. Then you can introduce a bit of dust here around the base. Uh, that really adds a nice effect as well. So I'll just continue it on around the rest of the model. All right, so that's the results there. Nice grubby feet, easily done. And then uh, the, the lower panels as well. Uh, dust is up nicely. It's a great effect to add on. Very easy, to, just took me 10 minutes there just to run around. Just with that one color, don't think you need to add any more colors than that, just to keep it that sort of nice muddy look. And so that's just faded that in nicely. Nice blending color to add uh, to the lower part of the model here. But I think the model's now complete. So there he is, I don't have a name for him as yet, I've got a few names going around in my mind, but I'm sure the name will come in time. I'll, I'll glue this back, I'd imagine I'll just glue this back on, I might keep it loose, but uh, I may just glue that back in place, like so. But there he is, finished up. The final stage then is to take your uh, varnish, immunitorum varnish from Games Workshop, give the whole thing a nice uh, sort of light spray. Just to seal everything, it'll help protect the transfers as well, and uh, just to link the again link the whole model together uh, and seal it up and uh, give it a layer of protection. And that Minotaur and varnish uh, from Games Workshop, so it's a newer one, but it works really well. It's great on metallic, so it's perfect for this model here with lots of metallic uh, parts. So you want to keep a nice sort of satin finish too. If we just rotate them around. That's the model done. I thought I'd never get this one painted, but uh, thanks to being able to turn it into a painting tutorial, it's meant I've able to get on with it quite quickly here and make some progress and actually get it done. And now it's ready to go to war. So I hope the tutorial has been a help to you. So there's this painting tutorial here, there's already an in-depth painting tutorial on the Plus channel for the Orcs and over on the regular channel as well, uh, How to Paint Orc Boys. So that's your full spectrum of painting tutorials. Uh, pretty much the same technique, obviously a lot more in-depth here and a lot bigger, you know, huge project this one. But uh, the same basic technique, your base colours, your spray is key, so your foundational spray which we used, uh, the plate mount from Army Painter, then your washes, to, uh, then your base colours to go on top, you fill out all the panels and so on, uh, then your washes, links the whole thing together, does all the shading work for you, and then the final highlights and the chipping and special effects, the dusting around here and so on to finish the model off, and uh, that's the kind of result that you can expect. I mean, I think anyone would be able to pull out the results that you see here, just follow along step by step. There's no reason why you can't paint up your own stomp or any of the Orc vehicles uh, to the same standard that you see here. But uh, it's always exciting to have Apocalypse units painted up. Now the Orcs finally have a stomper for them to use in their games. I am in contact with other Orc players that have stompers as well. So uh, the, the dream is to do some Orc Apocalypse battles on a large scale and see multiple stompers moving across the battlefield. But keep a look out for this one. I have my own one now to use, uh, Gut Rippers. Uh, own stomper to join the ranks and uh, to bring death and destruction to the Imperium on the apocalyptic scalp. There it is, that's the in-depth painting tutorial. Give a look out for more uh, painting tutorials, got more planned for the Plus channel here, just to uh, give you a nice, uh, back, uh, a nice sort of hobby resource as well as all the gaming uh, and list building and so on that takes place on the Plus channel here. But there it is, thanks for watching and tune in next time.